All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, I want to do a PSA about a potential frost warning that has come in. And also, I want to talk about the fact that we just hit 20,000 subscribers. I'm really excited about it. I want to thank you guys out there who have subscribed over the years and have stuck with my videos over the years. I mean, I say it all the time, but I never even thought I'd get over 1,000. And you know what? 20,000 is nice, but to be honest with you, I don't even think I have 20,000 subscribers. It's just the number of people who have clicked the button. And uh, I think realistically, I probably have somewhere around maybe a couple or a few thousand of you guys who are loyal fans and subscribers and follow the channel uh, religiously. And that's enough for me. I think um, that's more, way more than I would have ever expected. And uh, as a result of this YouTube channel, I've had a lot of benefits, a lot of... Uh, People I've met along the way that are really uh, something special. I've made a lot of friends too along the way. Shout out to my buddy Dom and Chris and all the other fig friends that I've made. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many of you guys out there who have either sent me something, done something so nice that it would, it's just an extremely long list. All the people who support me on Patreon, um, you know, you guys are the best. You guys really um, make this easier to do and to put out a video almost every day for you guys is, uh, is a bit of a pleasure at this point. Um, I really do enjoy it. Um, now, on to this PSA here that I have about frost because we have a potential frost warning coming in, guys. Um, this Friday, Friday morning, on the 17th of April, so two days from now, I'm probably gonna put out this video tomorrow. What I'm gonna do tomorrow is actually cover a lot of this stuff. You can see behind me, we have low tunnels and things set up. Uh, I haven't finished that yet. The plastic will come tomorrow, hopefully, and I can cover a lot of the in-ground figs because with a lot of this stuff, we have flowers, we have foliage, and we have fruit that is already set. So the fruit that is already set and the flowers is really what we need to watch, we need to watch out for. Now, depending on what it is, it could be, let's say, a fig, a persimmon, a mulberry, uh, a grapevine. Um, those are the kind of things that put out new growth and if that new growth is damaged in any way, uh, we lose that crop for that year. So the foliage is different, the buds are different than the flowers and the things like the, you know, the, the uh, peaches that I'm looking at here that are spaye, the apples, the stone fruits, all the cherries, the, um, the blueberries in the front, the, go the gooseberry, the jostaberries, the honeyberries, the gumi. Um, you know, all that stuff is flowering right now or has already set fruit. And as a result, uh, if a frost comes in and it's hard enough and it has a long enough duration, I will lose that fruit. So, um, I'm not saying it's going to happen here, but I am telling you guys that it could happen where you live, especially if you live north of me, you live west of me. Um, I'm very close to the Delaware River and anybody who's close to a big body of water um, or even just in a big land mass that's in between two bodies of water, you have a really great microclimate that increases the temperatures enough to potentially avoid frost in times like these. A lot of us in the Northeast, even in the South, we struggle with, that are more inland, we struggle with growing these things like apples and pears and stone fruits because they flower so early. They put out all these flowers and then, you know, because of global warming or because we had a mild winter, we had a very warm spring so far, we have everything going like gangbusters. Everything's growing out here. And then a frost comes in and we just have to cross our fingers that we don't get it. And this happens every single year. And for people that are in like, let's say, you know, even just an hour west of me are in way worse shape than, uh, than myself. You know, people in Bethlehem or Lancaster, um, people in Pittsburgh, you know, people uh, that are in more, way more inland are a much colder climate than where I'm at because I'm so close to the water. So it's important that if you live in these areas, you know, you got to be taking some sort of precaution and that's really the PSA. So here's how a frost is going to happen, or at least has a higher chance of happening, a lower temperature, obviously, but you can even have a frost, guys, at 40 degrees, 41 degrees. It's possible. Um, you get the right dew point, you get the right temperature. Uh, it can happen. Also, if you have yourself 
uh, a very you know clear skies at night and you have a very still day still night um, those two things will actually increase your chances of frost if it's very windy and you have a lot of clouds above you're decreasing your chances of frost so you know some methods of protection here now guys first off things that are above can really help prevent frost from getting down low so if we put them underneath the house this overhang here or if they're underneath trees uh, you know underneath some sort of microclimate that's happening that's a big deal if we can move things out of the way that's a really great idea uh, otherwise we're gonna have to cover them and that's a big thing that I'm gonna do here is get out the tarps we have the low tunnels the plastic this plastic should be enough uh, for a very light frost like this this plastic will be fine um, you know for something that's probably I'm expecting to not really be the biggest of deal here this plastic will be fine but otherwise get yourself some tarps get yourself some mulch some leaves some of that straw that we had in the winter time hopefully you kept that stuff around you can um, put that back on top of your plants for the time being and um, another big tip is maybe get yourself a sprinkler you have a sprinkler system sprayed over top of your tree all night on Friday uh, I should say Thursday night Friday morning and you'll end up uh, preventing frost on that particular tree that you have the sprinkler system on. Um, so that's a big tip. Another big tip is, um, let's see, uh, man, what was it? We had to cover them, put them away, the sprinkler. Man, it's escaping me now, guys. But if you have some sort of tip, some sort of really great idea, put, put that down in the comments. I'm sure a lot of people would love to hear it definitely the frost settles so you know get them out of a low area of your yard put them against structures thermal mass things that have warm up during the day and release heat at night um, yeah just get everything out of the way that you can and cover what you can get yourself any sort of blanket oh here's the big tip that I was forgetting maybe even you might it's a good suggestion to use um, Christmas lights you guys have Christmas lights that you wrap around your trees. You can wrap them around the branches, plug them in, and uh, you'll actually get about a four to five degree difference, and that's enough to stop frost on your trees. So that's a lot of tips there, guys. That's a lot of subscribers. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys get through this all right. I hope I get through this all right. And uh, I hope I see you guys for the next episode of uh, what we're doing here in the backyard. <laughs> all right, guys. Take, uh, check us out on Fig Boss and subscribe to the channel. Believe it or not, I saw a statistic that only 20% of the people who actually watch my videos are a subscriber. So hit the button. We'll see everybody soon. Take care, guys.